Hello and welcome to another session and this time on critical reasoning and critical thinking. So what is critical reasoning? It is essentially about argument analysis, right? And though we have covered it earlier, but what is an argument? An argument is a reason and a reason leading to a conclusion, right? Uh, some people call it a premise. So a premise and a premise adding up to a conclusion this whole three statements together is an argument. Think of it as a box and it is made up of reasons and conclusion. There could be multiple reasons also, right? Now, uh, let's go for another example just so that we understand what an argument is. So if I say, Raheem is a man, all, and I tell you that all men are mortal. So these two are my reasons or these two are my propositions that I'm using to come to the conclusion that Raheem is a mortal, right? In case I'm going too fast or this is very unfamiliar, I recommend that you go through the verbal logic session one or the deductive logic video. This kind of an argument or syllogism is covered in detail there. But this is essentially an argument. But in critical thinking and critical reasoning, we're looking at real world arguments. Uh, we know this kind of an argument is very, very academic, very formal. Uh, and it is not, I mean, this is not how we really argue in the real world, right? Okay, before we go any further, uh, I would like to say that everybody already who is watching this video is already very, very good at this subject. Everybody is very, very logical and they most people do tend to think critically in their day-to-day -day lives, okay? And everybody is presenting arguments to you. So somebody says, vote for this party because this party will bring development, right? So vote for this party is a conclusion and the reason given is that it'll be it will bring development or the other party says do not vote for this party because it will divide the country. So do not vote is the conclusion and the that division of country will happen is a reason given, right? So and all TV ads or all the ads that you see are, are basically arguments only because they're saying buy this product because of this reason, right? So they're saying, for example, a deodorant company is saying, if you use this deodorant, women will come to you. So the reason is that women will come to you. Therefore, you should buy this deodorant, right? So arguments are everywhere. They are the currency of thought. Basically, uh, if you want to convince someone to do something, you will have to present an argument. You will have to use arguments when you're working in a company. Or when you're presenting your ideas, you have to back your ideas by reason, right? And you have to work with logic. So all of that put together is essentially critical thinking or critical reasoning or analyzing real world arguments. Okay, so let's get back to the fundamentals of the argument. Think of an argument as a box, as one unit, and it is made up of reasons and conclusion, right? The reasons add up to the conclusion. The reasons provide support to the conclusion. And the reasons and the conclusion together are considered an argument, right? But essentially, you can also consider the conclusion as the argument because that's the crux of the argument, right? Now, when I'm saying reason plus reason, there could be more than one reason also. There could be multiple factors. For example, I might say this is the cheapest car. It has the best mileage. Uh, it is the most rugged and has the best service in the country. Therefore, you should buy this car. So all of these reasons put together leading up to one conclusion that's how you should buy this particular car right or it could be a reason and a reason leading to conclusion and the conclusion then becomes another reason for a further conclusion for example Raheem is a man Raheem is a man all men are mortal so that will lead to Raheem is a mortal but furthermore it is given to me that all mortals are funny we know Raheem is a mortal and then we know all mortals are funny therefore Raheem will become funny so this is once again like a very academic argument it has no uh, ambiguity in it all the reasons are provided and the flow is quite clear once again if this kind of process is not making sense to you I recommend going through the verbal logic session one deductive reasoning video uh, this will become easier right okay so what happens in a real world argument let's look at uh, let's start with an example so somebody will say Raheem is a scientist 
and therefore he must be intelligent or he is intelligent right they will not probably even say therefore just this is the kind of argument that somebody will present rahim is a scientist therefore rahim is intelligent right now i i see that rahim is a scientist is the reason given and rahim is intelligent is a conclusion drawn that much is clear right and even you might be thinking that yeah this argument of this idea is okay rahim is a scientist and scientist uh, the rahim is intelligent is okay you have to question yourself that why is this argument seeming okay to you right because uh, from scientist to intelligent how are we going there we go back to the previous example rahim was a man all men are mortal therefore rahim was a mortal so from man to mortal i had a connection rahim was a man rahim was connected to being a man man was connected to mortal and therefore rahim was connected to mortal here rahim is connected to scientist and directly i am jumping to rahim is intelligent so there must be a link between scientist and intelligent which is a reason not stated because it might be such common information that everybody knows it or the argument might be becoming too long or he might not remember or he might be trying to manipulate the argument because if i present that data somebody might be able to question it more easily so i drop a few things but we are not interested in that just that in real world arguments not all the reasons are stated but they are still part of the process right so they they are adding to the logic it is just that they are not stated in the argument so an unstated reason is known as an assumption okay so if i want to go back to my definition of an argument and more specifically the way an argument works in the real world it would now be reason plus assumption is equal to conclusion when i say reason i mean reason 1 reason 2 reason 3 and when i say assumption i there could be multiple assumptions as well so reasons plus assumptions is equal to the conclusion right whereas assumption is a reason because that's what an argument means a reason plus reason is equal to the conclusion but assumption is an invisible reason right it is an unstated reason so we need to remember that an assumption is a reason it is part of the logic process from getting from uh, one point to the other but it is just that it is not stated it is not explicitly mentioned but the it is important for the argument process of the speaker or the writer just that the speaker or the writer has not mentioned this particular reason right going back to our example of rahim being a scientist and him being intelligent can we articulate let's say if we say this is a good argument or this is logical why is it logical or how can we make how can we make this argument more logical right or improve its validity we cannot come to a certainty because there is uh, that missing link is there but let's say if we were to improve it how would we improve it all i have to do is connect the science to the intelligence right in the simplest form the sentence would be all scientists are smart or all scientists are intelligent or i would say a recent study has shown that 95% of the scientists are intelligent in all of these cases that missing link which was not mentioned is now highlighted i can see a jump from scientist to smart and therefore rahim also becomes smart or rahim also becomes intelligent so the connection kind of becomes complete i can also say that the argument has been improved or strengthened now it has carrying it is carrying more weight right because the conclusion it has more support now right so this process of critical thinking is essentially about spotting assumptions and working on the inference process right we'll talk about inference in a minute but spotting assumptions is the main game here because let's say if i want to talk about your exam point of view you have questions like strengthen the argument weaken the argument identify the assumption now in most of these questions the assumption spotting is the game uh, because uh, for a straight forward what is the assumption question obviously you are finding in the finding the assumption but for strengthening or weakening kind of questions also you are using the assumption only you want to strengthen the argument you highlight the assumption you want to weaken the argument you try and negate the assumption so we we'll talk about this more with this example only but the idea or the principle thing which is ambiguous in an argument is the missing reason or the assumption 
or the link between objects right so uh, we must pay attention to assumptions hidden in the argument now right going back to this example say this time you wanted to weaken the argument or say you wanted to attack the conclusion you do not want to believe the conclusion and you want the other person to know also that the conclusion is wrong or basically you want to create doubt about the conclusion how will you do that right once again the key would be identifying the assumption in the argument rahim is connected to a scientist and then rahim is connected to intelligence but there is no connection between scientist and intelligence mentioned in the argument that means it is an unstated reason or an assumption the link between science and intelligence right because it has not been stated you can also attack it so say if you find a piece of evidence which goes against that connection which breaks the connection between scientist and intelligence uh, if you find or provide such an evidence you would be weakening this particular argument so say you found a study which says that most of the scientists are not smart you will be severely weakening this particular argument right so if you look at the last two uh, examples or ideas that we have processed are that if i want to strengthen the argument or weaken the argument i am still looking at the assumption only right i am finding the assumption and highlighting it if i want to strengthen the argument and i am finding the assumption and putting something contrary to it if i want to weaken the argument right so assumption spotting is the name of the game okay i hope we got the basic idea of what an argument is the basic structure of reason plus reason is equal to a conclusion and more in the real world as reason plus assumption which is an unstated reason is equal to the conclusion right so this is the basic idea involved this is the skill required to break down uh, arguments and analyze them spotting the assumption finding the missing link Uh, reading between the lines, so as to say, right? So, but our uh, real world arguments will not be as simple as Rahim is a scientist and therefore he must be intelligent. It'll be slightly longer, bigger, uh, more real world language. So let's look at a few examples, and after that we'll move to the questions. In the examples, our only purpose is to divide the argument into a conclusion and reason. and once you have seen that we'll go into questions of strengthening the argument and weakening the argument so stay with us right okay so i hope this was pretty easy no one was present when life first appeared on earth is the reason given for the conclusion that any statement about life's origin should be considered theory not fact right so the author wants you to believe that uh, the ideas about of origin of life should be considered theory not fact why what is the reason given for that that he is saying that no one was present right there is a link between there is a missing link between presence and something considered whether something should be considered theory or not but we will not go into too much detail we just want to get comfortable with the idea of spotting conclusions and reasons in an argument and and basically understanding what an argument looks like for now right yeah once again since it turns out that all humans are descended from a small number of african ancestors in a recent evolutionary past this is the reason believing in profound differences in races as ridiculous as believing in a flat earth this is the conclusion right once again the first part of the paragraph is a reason and for this reason the jury is one of the most important predictions of the democracy is the conclusion of the argument right houses are built to live in not look on is a reason and the conclusion is therefore let use be preferred over uniformity right so more often than not just by reading and if you can translate it for yourself you will understand that what is given as a reason and what is a point that the author or the speaker is trying to make so it shouldn't be too difficult but there is some help available uh, 
we have already looked at the importance of keywords or conjunctions in our reading skills videos once again here also these conjunctions will come in handy because there are some words which indicate that whatever text follows is going to be a conclusion right words like does hence therefore for this reason consequently etc so whenever you see such a word whatever of follows after that is definitely going to be the conclusion and whatever else is there will be part of the explanation or the reason right similarly there are reason indicators words like since because as for right so again if you find these words before a sentence it should be pretty easy to guess that whatever follows is the reason part of the argument the support part of the argument you should go back and look at the examples that we just did you will see words like since and therefore as part of the argument process okay so that covers the basics for us now let us try some actual questions from exams like cat and gmat etc so these questions will appear on the screen take your time uh, try and thoroughly understand the argument given before going to the options or before evaluating the options uh, try and find the conclusion try and see what are the reasons provided see if there is a missing link between the reasons and the conclusion or try and find the assumption right so do this before picking up the options and evaluating them because in the beginning we really want to understand the argument and the missing links if at all any are present there right uh, and after that we'll discuss it together so take your time try the question and then come to the analysis right okay so one of the skills that you will require to do these questions well is called paraphrasing or basically taking a long sentence and simplifying it for yourself right uh, so the summary or the paraphrasing for this argument would be that businesses must be profitable there is another sentence in the beginning about how during the past 20 years computer scientists focus increasingly on starting and running successful businesses but our argument starts afterwards businesses must be profitable right and therefore computer scientists must focus on developing products that generate profit so i will paraphrase this as business must be profitable and scientists must develop profit generating products businesses must be profitable is a reason from this reason i can conclude that the product must be profit generating so this far is logical there is a connection right business has to generate profit computer scientists are in the are uh, running a business so they must generate profit that means a product that they are making must also generate profit so there all connections are valid and i mean there's no missing link so far but after that he says consequently and this is our conclusion consequently is our keyword for indicating the conclusion computer science has lost its creative aspect right so they should make products which generate profit but from there how did i get to the lack of creativity right so i hope we are able to see that there is a gap right from generating uh, from creating profit generating products to having no creativity how did i make that connection or how did the author make that connection right so he must be assuming that whatever is profitable cannot be creative because if i put it there then the argument makes sense something profitable cannot be creative scientists need to make something profitable therefore they will not be able to make something which is creative right so this is our assumption for the for the argument once i have spotted the assumption now uh, or if i have evaluated the argument now try and go back to the options and see if this is mentioned or this is there in any other form paraphrased or mentioned in any other language right because the same idea can be expressed in different words but this is how i how i would look at questions in the beginning at least right i want to understand the concept here okay so this was a assumption spotting question but let's say if the question was about weakening the argument or strengthening the argument once again my key would be the assumption only right for example if the question was weaken the argument if i now attack the assumption and i say 
something that is profitable can't be creative is wrong right that means something that is profitable can be creative if i put it there now will computer science has no creativity will it make sense no it would not right because you would say you have to make profit generating products but then something which is profitable can be creative therefore computer science has no creativity is not making sense anymore computer science should i mean the create possibility of creativity should exist now in computer science right so if i attack the assumption or if i negate the assumption the argument gets weak or it starts uh, basically jiggling or falling down right because the reason or the assumption is necessary for the support of the conclusion so once you attack the assumption the conclusion should fall down which then can be used as a tool to evaluate assumptions also if you're going through the options maybe look at the option understand that any option that you're looking at is an assumption that means it is part of the reason so negate it and see if the conclusion is falling down or getting invalidated right because if it that is not happening it is not a valid assumption i hope this is making sense to you maybe repeat this listen to it a couple of times to figure out the connection because the assumption is a reason a necessary reason for to for you or for the writer to come to the conclusion if you negate the assumption the conclusion should also get negated right so if you negate the options and nothing happens to the conclusion that means your option is not really valid if you negate the option or a conclusion also falls down that means this is a valid assumption right i hope i'm making sense but don't worry this idea will be repeated many many times or go through the basic equation of the argument you will see it is reason plus assumption is equal to conclusion so once you attack the assumption you remove the assumption from the equation the conclusion should also become invalid conversely if you were to strengthen the argument you would highlight the assumption you will try and make it obvious that the the missing link is covered for so for example you would say studies say that making a product which is both profitable and creative is very very difficult or uh, a recent recent study has demonstrated that profitability causes factor x and factor x causes a decline of creativity therefore profitability causes a decline in creativity so anything any data which is basically the assumption stated in another word is going to strengthen the argument right so i hope the idea is making sense to you the answer for this question is option c as of now i am not going to discuss all the other options but if you think something else is the answer some other option is the answer uh in the comment section provide your reasons for it right because critical thinking is all about providing reasons and analyzing arguments so if you think that my answer for this question is incorrect do provide your reasons for it okay but as we move along we'll discuss look at the options also to evaluate it and sometimes see how silly they are but in the beginning because we're trying to master the concept here we really want to look at the argument by itself spot the missing link first analyze it in my head then look at the options otherwise it is very very likely especially if english is a second language for you that you might get confused by the options themselves though once you have mastered the subject or at least partially done it options can give great help to you but for now we just want to analyze the argument by itself okay let's move to the next question try the same thing hit pause try the question by yourself uh paraphrase now you know how to paraphrase right Uh, try and reduce this paragraph into two or three sentences for your so that you can hold it in your head easily so that you can analyze it easily and then come to the analysis okay so i hope you took your time and went through the argument uh, identified the reasons and identified the conclusion and tried looking for the assumption and even before that read the argument a couple of times paraphrased it for yourself in simpler words in language that you understand so this argument reduced to simple sentences would be that that due to advances in biotechnology genetic roots of disease will be traced so basically genetic roots will be traced 
and as a result they are saying that the disease will be eliminated right now it seems okay but our task is to look at it in more detail try and read between the lines see if they are well linked or if there is a missing link or what is the assumption involved because once i do that i can strengthen the argument weaken the argument or identify the assumption itself right so genetic roots will be traced and the mentioned disease will be eliminated so now what to think of and where to start thinking from think of the disease factor right so the disease will be eliminated think of in your head you know enough about the world what causes a disease right so one of the factors is mentioned here genetic Uh, genetic roots but then you have also seen that maybe the environment can also cause a disease for example a virus a mosquito dengue malaria or radiation or something like that right so environment can also cause a disease so for other disease there could be multiple factors which are causing a disease right it could be completely psychological for example uh so anyway in the argument the genetic factor will be traced and let's say it it will help eliminate the disease but only partially right because only the genetic factor is under control but what about the environment the environment still might cause the disease right so that means to make the argument the writer or the author is assuming that there is no other factor for these diseases at least right so that's part of the assumption that no other factors are there genetic roots is the only factor that has been covered according to the argument therefore the disease will be eliminated so now it makes sense but if i throw in an environment factor for example somebody comes and tells you that no these diseases are also caused by the environment like let's say by a very hectic lifestyle or something like that right so then this capturing or controlling the genetic roots will not be sufficient to eliminate the disease i hope you're getting the idea once again the question was about identifying the assumption but had it been about strengthening or weakening the argument the same method would have worked were you to weaken it you would present another factor beyond genetic roots which can work on diseases and if you were to strengthen it you would point to the fact that there are no other factors for such diseases right so once again identifying the missing link uh, something that was connecting the finding of genetic roots to the elimination of disease right the connection between them the assumption the unstated reason right that's the key thing in the evaluation of arguments so the answer for this question would be option b okay so let's try one more question and this time uh, the question is about identifying the flaw in the argument right that means you were supposed to find the weakness of the in the argument that means you are supposed to stand on the other side and try and attack the argument and once again it would be about trying to find the missing link or the gap factor or the assumption involved right so let's uh, try this question paraphrase it for yourself simplify it for yourself and then come to the analysis okay okay so this argument i hope you went through it you identified the conclusion as well as the reasons given for it and you were able to simplify the sentences for yourself so that we can talk about them right so the conclusion is that the belief that teenagers eat more ice cream than adults is false that means teenagers don't eat the most ice cream is the conclusion and what is the reason given for it is that middle age segment purchases the most now if you do not pay attention it is very very easy they are purchasing the most that means uh, they must be eating the most and therefore teenagers are not eating the most right but remember to come to this teenagers are not eating the most i had to assume that those who are purchasing are also eating right otherwise what's the connection between adults purchasing and therefore teenagers not eating because maybe the adults are buying it for teenagers themselves right i hope you're getting the idea from middle age segment purchase the most i am assuming that purchasing is equal to eating that would mean that middle age consumes the most that would mean teenagers do not consume the most and that means a popular belief that teenagers consume the most is false so i'm going step by step here i hope you get the idea right so purchasing was mentioned 
and eating was mentioned what was the link between purchasing and eating what was the writer or the author assuming he was equating purchasing to eating and therefore he could make this conclusion but how do we know that purchasing is equal to eating since we do not know that we can present this as a flaw in the argument right because maybe for these 40 to 50 year olds our parents and they're buying ice cream for their children and they're not eating at all so how did he come to the conclusion that teenagers do not eat the most right so i hope you see the point here once again identifying the flaw was about identifying the assumption because then you can attack it or support it according to your needs right if i attack it the conclusion becomes weakened let's try one more question once again pause the video try it for yourself uh, try to identify the conclusion use the keywords there is a therefore that i can see here so you know where the conclusion is find out what the reasons are and try and simplify it for yourself uh, do not hurriedly go through the questions so with before and if you do not understand the argument trying to evaluate is going to be very very difficult so do translate well for yourself right okay so this is what it says that there is a disease uh, there is a drug that can be made from a plant which is rare in the wild so let there is a plant for making a medicine and is rare in the wild right and it also says that it takes a lot of quantity to produce some quantity of the medicine 5 kg is to produce 1 kg which means that lot of that plant will be required to make some medicine right and therefore the plant will go extinct right again it seems reasonable because so much quantity is being consumed the plant will obviously be uh, will all the plants will be cut and therefore the plant will go extinct but again we are not looking carefully at the problem or the conclusion right how do tree populations work right when i am saying trees will go extinct that means all trees will vanish now this the the presence of trees depends on the growth of trees and the death of trees right the birth and death factor controls the population or in the case of trees let's say planting and cutting so here if i look at the argument there is the part of cutting is covered so they're saying because a lot of quantity is required to make 1 kg a lot of cutting will be there and therefore the tree will go extinct that means they are also assuming that there will be no planting no extra growth what if i make acres and acres of farms on my property right so even if i want to have a lot of quantity in fact the plant population has grown very very high because i want to grow it so when i'm going from that is rare in the wild and a lot of quantity is required to it will that means a lot of cutting will be required cutting will mean the population will go down therefore it will go extinct i'm assuming that there will not be any growth right so that's a missing link because if i assume that no people will be planting the right now it's only grows in the wild but we know medicine is required so everybody will plant it everywhere in that case why will the population go extinct that means the writer at least is assuming that the growth will not change whether he is right whether he has a reason for it whether we are not interested in that as of now we are just finding what all links are there right so he is assuming the growth will not change if i want to attack it i will say growth will change people will plant more trees so the argument the conclusion will become shaky yeah or it will become weakened if i wanted to strengthen the argument i would do the opposite i would say yeah there will not be any more growth in fact there will be even further cutting because of some other factor to heighten the conclusion that the tree will go extinct right i hope this is making sense to you <coughs> okay so hope all of that is working for you you know how an argument works uh, and how to analyze it and how to strengthen or weaken it and how to spot the assumption etc <clears throat> in the next session we look at some cat questions some gmat questions if you have any specific questions about critical thinking in terms of you have a question that you want me to solve you can put that in the comment section and i'll try and put it in the video so that's it see you soon happy preparing shabba khair good night thank you